Cool. So uh, AI and future sales enablement. This is really great because I get to speak first and set the bar at a nice, easy level because all the smarter people are speaking after me. Uh, so I'm looking forward to sharing a couple of things. Uh, but really, this is about the warm up. Um, Myths. I, I'm not here to talk about how we're all going to lose our jobs, how we're all going to become robot slaves. Uh, this is not what we're going to talk about. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about AI technologies, uh, and I really want to talk about what this means to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so come with me as we, we go through a couple of things. So first off, let's all acknowledge we all already rely on automation every single day in our homes, at work. Here are a couple of examples. I won't go through all of them because you can read the slides. Um, but if you think about the tools that you use right now, at home and in the workplace, all of them already are designed to take a menial task and automate it. And you take that first one, lead scoring. You know, we've all been in situations where we've had uh, a leader, an executive ask us, hey, this opportunity, this lead, how likely is it to close? Uh, and historically, that might have been a manual process, and now we're using tools to automate that. That might be as simple as we've moved it forward in the funnel, so now it's an 80% instead of a 60%. Or it might be something more sophisticated, because they've downloaded a paper, or they've attended a session, we think it's a 65 instead of a 55%. But we're already using all of these. Now, this isn't scary, because we understand how all of this works. But if we think about AI, uh, and this is a very non-authoritative, specifically tailored for you definition, I'd like you to think about things from this lens for a moment. The most disruptive thing that we are going to see in sales and marketing and sales enablement roles isn't really about becoming robot slaves, it's about automating the automation. Uh, and I know it's inception and it's deep. But come with me, there's a couple of examples because you're already doing this every single day. So let's take a look at ways. You know, we see ways suggesting alternate routes for us. Hey, we see we pop up. Hey, there's a different route that I could take. Maybe I say yes, maybe I say no. Now, the really interesting thing here is that Waze has automatically identified that route for you based on your behaviors, based on how fast you got there. Waze is automatically tuning whether or not that recommendation should have come to you in the first place. So it's not that there's a human behind the room saying, hey, you know, Kevin said, yeah, I'm going to take this one. Kenny said, no, I'm not going to take this one. There are algorithms that are looking at those inputs, automatically changing the recommendation that you automatically get. We see this all the time at home. A second example, if you're using a banking app, this is from the Bank of America. We already have algorithms in the banking space that take a look at fraudulent transactions, see what activities happened and didn't, and then automatically tune the algorithms. Historically, it might have been something like you, you bought something in Toronto, and then the next day you bought something in San Francisco. And I, I know we have some colleagues who are going to be facing that shortly. Uh, it's no longer as simple as just a simple threshold. You know, it's going to be things based on what was the past pattern, what have they bought from the past, you know, what have they bought for others and their family. And those factors, there's no human that's saying these were the factors. There's an algorithm that's doing that automatically. Now, we see this. But what does this mean in the workplace? Here's a couple of examples I want to walk you through. And these were specifically chosen because you're going to hear some examples about these from some of the future speakers. So predicting lead quality. What if instead of somebody saying they downloaded a white paper, so let's boost the probability of a close up a little bit, or they attended our session, and let's bump it up, uh, or we lost the lead, let's bump it down. What if we were looking at algorithms that looked at the close rates of your deals and then automatically identified that it wasn't about those factors, it was about the fact that they attended this one specific set of meetings from your SDRs. And so now you, as a sales rep, you don't even actually need to know what are the things that go into that factor. As a sales enablement leader, or as a VP, you don't even need to design them. The algorithms will do it for you. Or automatically submitting and reviewing expense reports. There are companies like Expensify that are already doing this where they're not just automatically submitting them, they're identifying which were the expenses that got rejected and then how can we move them automatically. And we're going to see the same thing on things like call scripts and activities like this. But why does this matter to you? This is all great. Strategically, we need to think about this. But for an individual sales rep, somebody who's stepping into a management world, why does this matter? Because it all comes down to our value in the marketplace. Now, as we think about the way we spend our time, uh, we're running a sales productivity survey. Many of you guys have filled it out. Thank you so much. We're doing that with the help from Level Jump, from Funnel Cake. We've got some fantastic insights. We haven't shared the report yet, but I've got a couple of sneak peeks for you. So the first thing we took a look at, 23% of the companies represented it were high growth. They're looking to increase their sales team by 50% or more over the next 12 months. OK, great, there's a quarter of them. You know, what were some of the things that unified those groups and the behaviors? Well, one of the things that was unfortunate 
was that all these groups that are hiring all these sales reps, these sales reps recognize that they're spending a huge amount of their time. Their biggest time waster was just hunting for information. And we solved search. You know, why do we have this big problem inside of our companies? So when we think about those high growth companies, what were the commonalities and the structures? When you go and you're looking for your next opportunity, or if you're at one of those companies and you're hiring people, what are the things that bring you together? What are you gonna see in the marketplace? Why is this relevant to you? It really wasn't about entering new markets. That was only about a third of them. It wasn't about launching new products. Same thing, that was only about a third of them. The one big thing that actually unified all of them was that their sales reps, the highest performing, the highest growth companies, their sales reps, almost two thirds of them, were only reading half of the content that marketing provided to them. And this is a huge issue. And so when we think about automating kind of the automation, how do we generate content, how do we provide it, how do we get it to you, these are some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, and when you think about these questions and you listen to some of the speakers that are coming up, you're going to see some really good examples about how they're doing it, how they're working with some of their clients and some of the cool things that they're doing. Um, but right now, this is what's happening in the office. They're not getting this automatically to them. They're tapping their neighbors. They're tapping their shoulders. And so when you think about why this is relevant to you, this is something that we're each doing every single day and what we need to try and fix. The reality is we're getting interrupted more than four times a day. A good third of us, more than four times a day. And the worst part of it, the people who are being interrupted aren't just us, it's actually the people who are doing more important things as well, our VPs and our directors. And it's a huge tax on the organization. Okay, so this is great. You see these on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, again, how does this relate to the idea of sales enablement? So why are we talking about this today? Because in your roles, when you think about what you're doing in your company today, what you're doing next, I'm challenging you to think a little bit about what does it mean for the changes coming down the pipeline for your company. So I'll talk about a couple of examples and ask you to think maybe kind of one step up, a little bit more strategically about how you can make a bigger impact in your organization, either in your current role or in your next role, because this stuff is all super, super applicable. So if we think about kind of the before and after history of AI's impact on sales enablement, there's a couple of very specific examples here. And we think about the traditional view of sales enablement, uh, and you're gonna hear from some wonderful people that are helping to, sh to shape that and change that. Um, there's still, unfortunately, a number of companies, a number of groups that still take a very, very kind of top-down, one-size-fits-all journey. Uh, and ultimately, it's a very human process where you have organizations that are maybe powered primarily by trainers delivering hands-on training, or a lot of individuals in a marketing group generating decks, responding to the requests that the sales reps ask for, or those asks are all driven by one-on-one -on -one conversations. Someone in marketing asking you, asking your team leads, what are your biggest problems? What are your biggest obstacles? You know, how many times have you sat down in a one-on-one -on -one or review and said, hey, what are you hearing from the customers? And they're using that as the primary way to gather that information. This is all changing right now. So if you aren't seeing it yet in your company, you will be. This is why it's really important. Uh, and as you think about making sure you're relevant and your work is really helpful, uh, this is a way to make sure that you do stay applicable. So here's a couple of things you're going to be seeing. Uh, and you'll hear comments, again, uh, about more peer-generated content, about more content that's automatically being offered up, either in systems like chat or inside systems like your CRM. And there's some great companies here in town that are doing exactly that. We're gonna see a lot more tailored suggestions, so it's tailored to you as a sales rep, your customer as a deal, uh, and more importantly, all this stuff is gonna to start to happen automatically. So you'll start to see tools and input and insights that are actually coming from the system, not from the individuals. So when we think about how these apply, I talked about an earlier example about automatic suggestions on lead quality and tuning. I had a chance to do a quick preview of Marco's presentation. He's got a great story in there. Uh, I'm challenging you to think about when your organization is building a sales enablement organization, a sales ops organization, how do you tune your behaviors to not only be more productive, but help the organization grow. You're gonna hear some great stories about the trials and the tribulations that happen from Tana talks about building out sales ops enablement organizations. Uh, so I've got a couple of questions for you to think about and ponder as you hear the next couple of conversations. The first one is how can you prepare for the change? If you think about the tools and the process you have right now that are automating things for you, what happens when those systems change automatically because the automation is being automated? And second of all, how do you think about all those questions and all those problems? Because when your organization is growing their sales enablement practice and their sales ops practice, they're thinking about this every single day. And if you can get this, and if you can be well aligned to it, you're going to be increasing your value to the organization, your ability to make money, and then the opportunities are going to open up so much more for you. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna hear some fantastic speakers. Uh, and again, if you have any questions about what we're seeing in the marketplace, happy to share more. And of course, happy to field any questions here as well. Thank you. Two minutes for questions, was it?